What's up guys, Giver here, and uh, today I wanted to go over um, a draft that I just recently was part of at my local game store. Um, this was a Nixalon draft, and actually I ended up coming in first place. Um, well, I mean, I guess technically there was a draw for first, not really a draw, but the top two, me and another guy, we had already played against each other um, once that night. And uh, we just decided, you know, just to go ahead and split the split the prize right down the middle. It was getting late. We didn't really feel like playing again. But uh, I still kind of consider that I, I won because I had the best record. This this deck went undefeated the uh, the entire draft. So... Maybe, like a lot of people, I was having a really hard time drafting Ixalan. Um, it's not like any of the previous sets that I drafted with, like, uh, Hour of Devastation, Omnicat, that kind of thing. In those sets, you could, you could just pick good, solid cards and run over your opponent. In Ixalan, it's a little bit more difficult because if you look at the power of the cards as individuals they're not of the same quality um, you really need to try to draft for a uh, like archetype or a tribe like pirates dinosaurs um, merfolk uh, vampires that kind of thing and uh, so you have to kind of keep an eye out it makes it difficult to draft honestly you got to keep an eye out for what is being passed to you as well as, um, you know, what you're actually picking for your deck as well. So it's kind of a little bit more complex than some other drafts. And so I just wanted to go over um, how this deck performed. I've played, I've tried to draft in the past um, uh, Vampires before. Didn't do well at all. I've tried to draft Dinosaurs before. Didn't do well at all. The Dinosaurs is always too slow. The vampires never had the the punch to to finish out the games, but I'm sure that's just because of my own. Um, I just me not being very good, but this deck actually worked out really well, and I'll tell you why. And hopefully, maybe if you start seeing some of these cards coming your way in a draft, um, it, it might help you out. I don't know. We'll see. So. What what got me started in this deck, this was a Pirates deck. It was blue-black Pirates. And what got me started was because very early on in the draft, I got, um, yeah, I saw a Pirates Cutlass. Now, the Pirates Cutlass looks very innocent, very easy to pass up. But this thing is super powerful, um, being able to bring it into the battlefield on turn three and immediately attach it to a pirate. Um, so my, my thought right from the, you know, when I first got this, pulled it from the draft was, okay, I'm going to grab pirates and I'm going to focus on drawing cards and being hard to, uh, hard to block or hard to deal with. And so, these are the cards that I picked for that. So, Stormfleet Aerialist. Um, again, it's got flying, and it's got the ability to uh, uh, come with a plus one, plus one counter on it for two mana. I mean, this thing's great. You throw turn two, you throw this thing down. Um, and if you're able to, to get the raid off on it, then it's a two, three. Um, and then on turn three, or even if it's just a one, two on turn three, you can throw a pirate's cutlass on it. You got a three, three flyer or a four, four flyer on turn three. Um, that that's getting in and attacking uh, super good. Uh, shipwreck looter. Again, it's a pirate. Um, it has raid discard a card, draw a card. Again, it just goes with that theme of I wanted my pirates. I wanted to be able to. Just draw cards until I could get those flyers or evasive type creatures down and put the cutlasses on them and just let them do work. 
mainly what I found happening is I would have one creature with two cutlasses just running in dual wielding a freaking pirate's cutlass, swinging them for like six, seven points of damage every turn. And then I'd just be laying out these, these stupid things, um, that could just chump block. Um, so anyway, it worked out pretty good. Uh, this one, this card wins games on its own. There was one game I was playing that, uh, it, it killed a Jace and it killed the opponent completely by itself. They could not do anything about him. He had two pirate cutlasses and I was basically just paying the three mana so that he couldn't be blocked and, uh, he just swing in. He was also really good because he's got the ability where he deals damage. You may draw a card and then discard a card. So it helps, you know, draw the key cards that you want, like your removal, that kind of thing. But when I was playing, I had two pieces of removal in my hand, so I really didn't want to use his ability. Um, Prosperous Pirates, they're, they're decent. Um, I mean, it's a five drop, three, four, so it's... It's something a little bit beefier to spend your mana on, but the ability for it to uh, create the two treasure tokens is really good. I mean, see, really, you can think about this as a 3-4 for three mana because you get those treasure tokens. You can use them immediately on whatever you want. Um, the other good thing with the treasure tokens is they interact well with another card they ended up drafting in the deck. So run aground, it's a little bit pricey for at four mana, but put an artifact or a creature on top of its owner's library. It's really good. I wouldn't run too many of them, but it's really good. You know, they lay out some big bomb or something like that that's going to mess you up. Well, you just throw it back on top of their, their deck. So you're pretty much making them, um, you know, in some, in some instances, this card is basically, um, your opponent gains no benefit from their last turn or they don't get to draw a card. It's it's decent. I wouldn't run too many of them, but it's pretty good. Again, another Shipwreck Looter. Siren Storm Tamer. These are good. They're pirates. They fly. They're one mana, so it's kind of lower end on the curve. But... Later on in the game, when uh, when this thing, you know, you draw it and maybe it's like, well, crap, it's just a 1-1. One, one. Well, it's it's relevant late in the game because it's got this ability. You can sacrifice it to counter something. So, opt. These, these are just good, especially in a deck like this. The ability for you to scry and then draw a card it's just basically thinning that deck out. Um, and, and you're, you're getting to scry. So you're like, well, I don't need this card. You throw it down on the bottom, you draw a card. I found myself casting this at the end of the opponent's turn. So you would scry one, say, no, I don't want that. Throw it down. Then you get to draw two cards, um, for maybe something that you do want. It's just a good card. I didn't have a whole lot of other things to replace it with. So instead of just filling my deck up with just random junk, I tried to keep good things that fit well with my theme in the deck and then use cards like Opt to, to thin it out so I'd always draw the things that I needed. Stormfleet Spy, again, three mana pirate um, that allows you to draw a card. Not great, but the ability to draw a card and then also just have a 2-2 a two -two to chump block something, it's decent. Siren Lookout, um, it, it has the ability to explore, and exploring is cool, but mainly I took this because it's a pirate that flies. Another opt. Now we kind of get into the black. So I tried to get black for removal, um, because, you know, you're going to be laying out a lot of these, a lot of these, uh, smaller creatures, and then... Typically what I'd find myself with is maybe one or two smaller creatures um, and then one big creature with uh, with some kind of evasive ability that had the pirate cutlasses. And what I would find sometimes is I, was, I would end up rushing. So me and the opponent were just trying to rush life totals down as fast as possible. Cards like this, like Vanquish the Weak, 
um, or just removal is hard to come by on Ixalan. So, yeah, it's three mana, but destroy target creature with power three or less. It just helps you survive a little bit longer. And, uh, I mean, I don't think it takes a whole lot of explaining to tell why removal's good. Blight Keeper, um, <laughs> honestly, he doesn't really fit the theme of the deck, but I wanted another, um, flyer. There was one game where I had two Pirates Cutlasses on a Blight Keeper. I don't know how the bat's little hands um, held the swords, but he still went. He still got in there and did some damage. Dire Fleet Hoarder. He's just a two, one basically. When he dies, you get a treasure token, um, and the the treasure is decent. But again, he's just a, he was just a pirate. Dire Fleet Interloper. This guy's really good. Again. He's got menace, so you throw the you throw the uh, pirate cutlasses on him. By the way, I drafted two pirate cutlasses. Um, you throw those pirate cutlasses on him, and he's got menace, so he's just getting in there. Mark of the Vampire is actually extremely good when you're playing a deck where you've got a lot of evasive creatures, and you've got um, those creatures have high power. Um, you put these Mark of the Vampires on them, and uh, it gives them lifelink. So it helps you in those race situations. There was one game I think I was up to like 40-some life. Just uh, rocking things with these Mark, with a uh, um, creature with Mark of the Vampire. So it's actually a really good card in draft. Deadeye Tormentor. Um... When he enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card if you attacked. Again, he's a pirate. Um, his ability's not great. But there was one game where I drew him late game. And a lot of times in a draft, you get down to the situation kind of towards the end, mid of the game. And you're basically top decking. So the opponent drew a card. He wasn't able to play it. He was kind of holding on to it for something. And uh, I ended up making him discard it with the dead out tormentor it was some kind of uh some kind of removal spell or something i don't know it worked out pretty well but again it's it's a pirate walk the plank another piece of removal destroy target non or fault creature for two black i mean this thing's a no-brainer if you're if you're playing black you take it contract killing um it costs a lot five mana but just the ability just to destroy a creature and that's it. There's no, there's no stipulations with it. It doesn't matter. You just kill something and you get some treasure. And uh, the the treasure comes in handy with, well, this card, this dead eye plunderers. Um, the the treasure comes in a lot and real handy with the dead eye plunderers. And uh, you you know you get to kill something so. All right, sorry, I'm back. It sounded like a gunshot went off upstairs. My wife dropped her phone. So, anyway, there's the deck. Um, as you can see, when when I always like to put my cards out kind of like this to see what the curve looks like. So I'm kind of curved more towards the low end, which is good for this style of deck. Um, you don't want something on the high end because I'm wanting to play small creatures and turn them into big creatures with my pirate cutlasses. Um, when I went for land, I basically went with uh, the normal 17 lands in a in a 40 card deck. About 17 lands is standard. And uh, I think I went eight island, nine swamp, and I leaned more heavily on the swamp because of the contract killing requires two black. And the walk the plank requires two black. I didn't have any blue cards here that required two blue. So I figured it was pretty safe. All in all, the deck performed wonderfully. Um, it went undefeated the entire tournament. Um, and it was really the first time that I'd done really good in an Ixalan draft um, setting. So I just wanted to 
I'll throw this out here. This deck worked really well. Um, just to, to maybe help somebody out if they're having trouble drafting Ixalan to show them kind of what a good draft deck seems to look like now. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some people that say, you know, this is junk. There's certain cards that aren't very good or whatever. But, you know, in a draft, you have to take what you take. You don't always get the luxury of picking exactly what you want. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess I've got a fairly standard skill pool of people that I was drafting against. So I feel like this is a this is a good solid deck and hopefully it shows somebody the kind of things that to look for when you're doing a draft. Um, I'm not a expert by any means, but uh, you know, this worked for me. So anyway, um, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, um, leave a comment um, with anything that, that you see that maybe I, I wasn't correct on or I don't know anything that you want to say I'm open to any comments so uh, also don't forget um, link for the patreon down below if you like this contact content and want to help support it and also get in on some of the, uh, the giveaways and that kind of thing then uh, check that out as well but anyway that's all I got for now peace guys